Hey, it's Teapock, and back in Katawa Shoujo, and this is not where I left off, as you might have noticed. Um, pretty much where I left off, the rest was skippable. There was like a few lines where Hassan was like, uh, I'm reading a book. That was pretty much it. So yeah, I skipped all the way to here, which is a ton. So... This choice doesn't matter, but I'm just going to do the other one. Why did you stop exactly? You've mentioned that before. Oh, that's a long story. Mia throws a sideways glance at the gallery owner who has her, who has drawn her mouth into a thin straight line. Oh, I forgot to turn off my fan. Uh, oh, that was not off. Okay, sorry. That was probably annoying. I don't have air conditioning <laughs> in my new room. And it is super humid. So, sorry. Um, anyway, I've had a life-changing experience like that, even though I didn't realize it until later. Did I tell you that Say and I have known each other for a long time? We studied at the same school. It's been... Goodness, how long has it really been? Please don't count the years, Shinichi. I think I can skip the... Nope. Uh, maybe you're right. At any rate, when we were back in school, we had this uh, friend, I should say. We were in the same program, and I think I met he met Say at the same at some party. I got to know Say through him, in fact. He was a, a spectacular artist, much like Tezuka, great talent despite the young age. He easily left the rest of us in his dust. We were good friends, he and I, but there were things that created friction in the friendship. It felt like I was watching him from afar. You weren't the only one. Omiya coughs, looking embarrassed. Any, at any rate, he um, ended up taking his own life, such a tragedy. In retrospect, that was made me choose a career as a teacher in the end. I never was that brilliant, nor that passionate. I desperately wanted to be a career artist, but I wasn't suited for that. You were good enough. <laughs> Perhaps I would have been, but this is what I ended up with. I just didn't have that drive after he was gone. I'm fond of kids and enjoy all forms of art, so it felt rather natural to take this path in life. But I think that history with the friend of ours was the key thing, as sad as it was. A turning point, as they say. Say so stands up and digs in the pocket of her jacket, taking it for a cigarette and lighter. Her hands are shaking. I'm going out for a smoke. Wordlessly, Nomi and I both decide to follow her after a moment. Skip? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, crap, censoring. Make possible censoring. Just don't, uh, okay. Crap. <laughs> I completely forgot about censoring in this game. Okay, here is the point where I say, explain. Fine, then explain to me. I can't. The same old stupid pattern emerges again, me asking our questions to which she replies with answers that don't answer anything, because it's the only way we can converse, apart from me listening to her blabbering about whatever, which isn't really a conversation. Is this a play? Are there some unseen roles that we have unknowingly set ourselves into, dictating the rules of engagement whenever we see each other, inevitably leading us to hurting each other? Her nonchalant answers, accompanied by even more nonchalant shrugs, leave me none the wiser. I hate it. So, I don't know what to say myself. I want to be angry. I am angry. But I also feel so powerless. Would anything I say matter at all? It's fine if you want to turn me down, but at least do it properly. And if you do, then last night was definitely a mistake. And in fact, this whole thing might have been a mistake. I don't want to turn you down. So you can't decide. Well, why are you playing with me like this, then? Hug, then ignore me. Kiss, then ignore me. Play me like a fiddle, is that it? Kiss me, then forget again. My voice is sounding very angry again, even to myself. Rin, too, finally... Rin, too, finally catches the mood, and her curious expression changes instantly to something more uncharacteristic. No. She leaves it at that. 
her eyes restlessly wandering around, searching the room as if the words she tries to find were written in the paintings she herself has wrought. Then what? I need to paint, so... Paint. My vision is filtering through the blood-red lens of unbridled anger. Don't give me that, Rin. I am not some damn muse of yours, free to be abused for the sake of painting. I am not some medium for whatever you aspire to. I am me. There is a limit to selfishness. Rin looks down at her toes and wiggles them a little melancholically while she takes in my outburst without saying anything to defend herself. Only after I've finished does she try to respond somehow. I can't do anything else. Or I can do all sorts of things, but I can't do... It's the only thing I can sort of do properly most of the time. Yeah, I've, that much I've figured out by myself, thanks. Art first, everything else second, or thousandth. Ever pause to consider things from, from a perspective other than yours? I snarl the words from between my teeth. They taste like poison anyway. Rune is positively alarmed by now, so at least she's not completely dense, but it seems that she just doesn't understand what I'm angry about. I can't believe she could be so stupid. I didn't want to. This time it's Rin who interrupts herself mid-sentence. Don't you understand? I can't. Can't what? She doesn't get a word out of her mouth. You never explain yourself. How am I supposed to understand anything if you never say anything? Why don't you ever talk? Say something. But she doesn't. Venting my anger at her feels satisfying, and being satisfied about it feels terrible. But I can't stop myself. I try to discern some hints of her reaction through my adrenaline disordered vision. My feedback was not the best kind, but I hope Rin got the clue that she can't just ignore everything else whenever she feels like it. I'd hate it if she didn't. She'd never, she never listens to anything. She's all, so unaffected by the world around her. Not this time, it seems. Her body is shaking like. Her body is shaking like from holding back tears, but I'll. Already know that Rin is not crying. Go away. Go away, Sal. I'm sorry I can't deal with this. Her voice is tiny and tired as she says this. But I hear the words clear as day. The blunt, hollow remark is a fitting conclusion to this unpleasant discussion that became an even more unpleasant and very one sided yelling match. I left the atelier, feeling angry and guilty. I never believed we would end up like this. I'm not like this. Rin is not like this. No matter how infuriating, unbearable, and outrageous Rin is, this is not like her. She really did change. Or was it me who changed? Maybe I only thought I knew her, or maybe I knew that Rin... knew the Rin that she isn't. Or was it me who caused all this by talking Rin into her chances with the exhibition? Am I directly responsible for Rin becoming like she has for the past few weeks? I can't think of any explanation for her weird behavior, other than the exhibition and all things that came along with it. Maybe it was the only way that could have brought us closer, but all it did was separate us further away from each other and now beyond the reach of either of us. Darkness covers the gardens of Yamaku High School, enveloping the small dormitory rooms in the blanket of the night. In one of those rooms, I lie on my bed, tired. So very tired. I gave up. I can't lie to myself that everything is alright. That everything will work out. That's not how things go. Glancing at my watch, I see it's 3.30 at night. I slide my fingers over the glass surface of the watch's face. It's been pretty dependable ever since I, just started to s I decided to start wearing it. Always knowing what's going on even when I didn't. I turn my head and see the neatly arranged assortment of medicine on my night table. They are dependable too, things I'm going to depend on for the rest of my life. I think of the limited days ahead of me, the infinite vastness of time that opens up in front of others, the time I wasted chasing things out of my reach, time I will never get back. I take off my watch and lay it down on the table. So that was Rin's bad ending. It's pretty sad how they ended that. <sighs> Both were in the wrong, I would say. I mean, 
Last time out, got very upset. Took out his anger on Rin. That's not something that he should do. But Rin was also in the wrong and completely neglecting him. A lot of the time. Anyway. That was Rin's bad ending. So. For her neutral ending. The scene. Oh, I'm worried about what this means. Aren't you? But aren't you happy? People are interested in your paintings. So in the walkthrough, it says, "Aren't you happy?" Lots of scene in parentheses. I'm worried what that means. But aren't you happy? People are interested in your paintings. Motorcycle guy, calm down. Calm down. Okay, he's gone. I mean, isn't that why you went ahead with having the exhibition at all? And all? Of course, they would ask you questions if they think it's interesting. It's like having sunrise twice in a row when you want to bathe naked in the moonlight. Sure. Nice, but it's not good enough. I complete the sentence for her, even though. I don't understand her inappropriate metaphor. I don't get it. You should try to be happier. It's your big night after all. All these people are here to see your paintings. I think it's awesome. I wait for her to say something. Either for or against, but Rin keeps brooding. She doesn't want to answer questions or explain to me what's wrong. If she has something to say, the words are left unspoken. The words that she cannot say. I shut her against the chill that wouldn't sp the chill wind that blows in the streets, and as howling fills the silence. We should go back in. You've got everyone worried. Ah, oh, there you are. Feeling better? It can get pretty hot in here. Dizzy spell can catch you off guard. He laughs brashly, almost obnoxiously. You should drink something if you're feeling weak, Tezuka. Rin nods weakly, but it seems enough to convince Namiya that she's fine. He pushes Rin a bit forward to introduce her to the person he was conversing with before. So, about what we were talking about before. Ah, uh, yes, I'm very excited to meet. I'm shut out of the conversation and the background noise of dozens of others. Discussions fill my ears with indistinct buzz. Even Emmy has disappeared somewhere. Standing in the middle of a crowd is a surprisingly lonely feeling. Not only Rin, but everyone else here seems to be part of something I'm not a part of. I'm happy for her, I really am, but it makes me feel like I haven't accomplished anything yet. Rin is living proof of the potential of a human being. She overcame her disability, even made it a strength. She should be happy. What is my potential? Rin made it this far, but how far can I go? Okay. Lots of scene is worrying. I hope it does not mean sex scene. Skip. Okay, good. Oh, vacation, huh? Some people will stay at the school, even over the holidays. Some will go back to their families. I should probably... I probably should make the trip back home and report to my parents that I'm alive and well. Not much to do at the school anyway, I suppose. The trimester will be stressful. Everyone will have to seriously start thinking about what to do after graduation. Including me. Doodles. The look at my doodles convinces me to stop trying to salvage them. It's a mess of lifeless lines, a wasted paper, if it wasn't on the flip side of my exam. I'm trying to recognize people. There's a lot of Rin. There's a creepy dog. And what appears to be a hippo and Kenji. Is that Yuko? Maybe? Trying to figure out what else. Carrot. Lots of carrots. There's another dog. Maybe it's because I didn't really set out to draw anything in particular. Just wanted to kill some time so the drawing became exactly like I am. Without a direction to go to. It'd be easier if I had some special talent like Rin. She had this she has it easy. It makes me kind of jealous. 
pisses me off that she herself can't seem to be happy about it. And time. The task call for the end of the exam draws grown and just pleasure from after class. I don't blame them. The exam was kind of tricky. The Tao expects a lot from our class, even though he's not strict at all. I guess he'd like us all like all of us to become scientists. Put down your pencils and turn in your papers, please. The beast gro groan comes from the desk to my side. Misha's despair is almost tangible. The dark aura of lost hope emanating from her seat makes me simultaneously frightened of and sympathetic to her. Now then, there should be homeroom before you are free, but I only have a few announcements to make to, so, to make, so this should be over quickly. His announcements are never important, so I only listen to him, so I listen to him only with one ear. She seems to be too down in the, in the dumps to even pretend attentiveness. She slumps her head against the desktop, looking stricken. Cheer up, Misha. It's vacation, don't worry about the test. Thanks, Hishan. Her frown becomes a small smile, and a sparkle of excitement lights in her eyes. What are you going to do over your summer vacation, Hichan? I'm going to Shichan's place. They have this awesome and super cool mansion. I'm so excited. I'm sure it'll be the bestest summer vacation ever. She seems to have forgotten all about her misery in a few seconds and bounces up and down on her seat as if to pump up her excitement. I don't really have any plans, I guess. Is that so? Maybe you should. The finger tapping on her shoulder steals Misha's attention away from me. Shizune points to Matao, who's expectantly looking back at the two of them. Yeah, I had a feeling that he'd be staring right at us. Oops. Sorry, Shichan, I didn't notice the teacher had finished already. Eh? She clears her throat and takes a deep breath. Stand. I stand up with everyone. Since I came here, I've always wondered about something. What do the wheelchair-bound students think about this daily tradition, being un unable to do it properly? Is it a faux pas to keep this tradition in a place that bypasses many others for convenience? Even though I never ask anyone, during these short weeks here I've come to the conclusion that they are definitely not insulted. They definitely are not insulted. They understand. That's what, is, that's what I like about this school. Nobody is too uptight about anything. Everyone is so considerate and understanding of each other. I wish the whole world could be like this. Bow. Oh, bow. Okay. I thought she was, like, punching something. Okay. I turn the page slowly, listening to the rustling sound of paper. Listening to the rustling sound of the paper makes when my fingers grasp it. I'm restless. It's, summer, it's the summer vacation. No class, no homework, no art club meetings. Just free time to spend however I want. It doesn't feel like anything. I tried to cheer up Misha, but I'm not feeling too cheery myself. To be honest, fr the free time is intimidating. It reminds me of the hospital and the long, meaningless days that had, had to be filled somehow. The only difference is that there I was bound to the ward, guarded by servers like nurses. Reading was a good solution back then, but the thought of spending my summer vacation reading books feels nerdy. What's wrong with that? That has nothing to do with the fact that I'm reading even now, just killing time to trying, trying to fight my anxiety. Besides, my mind is on other matters, stretching in too many directions to make sense of any of them. Thus, the book I've been on since Tuesday is progressing slowly. It feels like this book is talking, taking me longer to read than the author took to write. Try to put it down for a while, then read some again, starting all over from the beginning. Read each page twice. Nothing works. I have zero concentration. Taking it with me just in case, I head out to give some fresh air and inspiration as to what to do. I make my way to the quad, passing by students heading for the gates. The hastiest ones are leaving for their homes already, judging from the luggage and some, some of them are dragging with them. I guess that no matter how hospitable Yamaku is, home is still home. Still, I heard some people will be staying here over the vacation. The quad is big enough for its center and shadowless no matter how high or low the sun is. I stop in the middle and bask in the warmth. The bright makes me the brightness makes me squint my eyes when I look towards the main building. It looks all but abandoned already. Yuko was not at work today, so the next time I can get books from the school library is after vacation. 
There is a public library somewhere, I'm sure, but I'm feeling too lethargic to find out where it is. The hall is equally dead, so I have to content myself with returning to the dorms, ending my leisurely walk sooner than I expected. Then again, I wasn't quite sure what I was expecting in the first place. On a moment's impulse, I enter the girls' dorm to see if Ren or Amy are there. Neither is, so I go back to my own room to dwell on my lethargy. Lethargy. I should talk things through with Ren. She really bothers me. Defying the conceptual equivalent of gravity, she balances on a thin line zigzagging between insanity, incomprehensibility, and instability. Ren affects me too. She challenges me in ways that I didn't know, more accurately, didn't hope existed. I started to wonder whether these feelings are really love or I was just fooling myself. Surely it would be insanity to, to consider that. For the rest of the day, Rin, the hospital, Yamaku, and vacations swirl through my head. I can't concentrate on, even on concentrating. Thoughts seem to come up and go haphazardly, fragmented into two small pieces of cognition. I pick up the book and manage to read a hundred pages, but I'm sure by tomorrow I'll have no recollection of what's happened in the story. I try to clean my, up my room, but even that proves to be too bothersome, too time-consuming, and requiring too much attention to detail. It's usually like this. When you have nothing to do, you do nothing even if you could. As expected, Mom calls me and I end up promising to see if I can get a train ticket for tomorrow, or failing that the day after. Maybe I'll go downtown tomorrow anyway. I could do some shopping or something. It's not that I need anything, but maybe there are summer sales I could pick up something. Why am I trying to force myself? Before, I was content with having nothing to do, save for kicking the ball every now and then at the field. Now it seems that I can't settle down at all. Is it because I've changed, or because my world has changed? By 11, the darkness puts me to sleep. The medication bottles are innocuously arranged on, the, on my night table. Not at all beckoning, rather pointedly reminding me of the reality instead. It's even so I have to open three bottles, extract one large oval-shaped one, two small round ones, and one large flat that has to be cut in half, close those bottles, and chug down the medications with chaser of fresh tap water. The water tastes metallic on my tongue. I swallow it along with the pills anyway and head to the bathroom. The mindless job of brushing my teeth is fit for for trying to sort my thoughts. One emerges from the mass, clearly rising above others. I want to see Rin. I can't let my outburst of anger be the last thing between us before the vacation. I have to see her, tomorrow. Sleep overcomes my confused mind with more ease than it should. Well, that's good. I'm gonna go see Rin. But wow, 20 something minutes? Rain is falling on my summer vacation like an uncountable number of small bad omens. Luckily I'm not superstitious, but the bad weather makes me downcast too. It's been like this, this since morning and there's no end in sight. An impenetrable, an impenetrable gray mass of clouds shadows the sky as much as shadows my mood. In a bout of defiance I finished up cleaning this, I finished to clean it cleaning up this morning, but after what, but after that was done, I ended up staring out the window in hope of the weather clearing. The incessant drumming of rainfall against the roof and pavement is mesmerizing, a droning background noise to lose your mind into. This won't do, I have to get a move on. Should I pack now or later? I decide on the ladder and make my way outside, pausing briefly at Kenji's door to listen to the odd clunking sounds from the other side. I don't dare to knock out of the fear of finding out what he's doing. Braving the rain under my trusty umbrella, I cross the space to the girl's storm. Knocking on Rin's door yields no answer, but the door behind me opens instead. Hisao? Hi! Terrible weather. I even miss my morning jog. She frowns, but I would be glad if I was her. I miss morning jogs or anything but leisurely. Oh, hi. I was... You were looking for Rin. I don't think she's there. Have you seen her recently? Yeah, just this morning when I woke her up. 
The mention of waking up makes Emmy yawn like a cat and makes me feel, feel silly. Of course she has seen Rin. Emmy wakes her up and helps her get dressed on most mornings. It even makes her lunchbox every now and then. They're like sisters even though they seem to have nothing in common. Which is... I wonder which one is the elder sister. Probably Emmy against all odds. She's really diligent, even though she gives the feeling of someone who would be a total airhead. Why does it feel odd that she's so dutiful under the, under that cheery grin of hers? She left for the gallery a few hours ago. Hey, are you listening? Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm making a funny face or something, since Emmy tilts her head quizzically. Tilts her face? How do you tilt your face? Quizzically, looking at me with her eyes rounded and inquisitive. Hmm? Her innocent face seems to request my attention. Yeah, I'm listening. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. She furrows her brow, licking her lips as if to prepare for something. Why do you care so much about Rin? I mean, you probably hang around her more than I do. We even slept in the same bed sometimes, or until, or lately. After she banned you because you ravaged her hair? A shock of horror widens it. Emmy's eyes at least twofold making them seem even more saucer-like than usual, while a healthy blush rises to her cheeks and ears. She told, oh, I'm gonna strangle that Rin or something other, ho something other horrible. I hold back my laughter, lest she direct her disdain at me. Emmy recuperates quickly from the embarrassment and seems to forgive Rin in the same instant, getting her focus back on me. Anyway, are you in love with her or something? Uh-oh. This really feels like an elder sister questioning a suitor. I mean, it's kind of nosy. Not in a good, happy way, even if there is one to be begin with. She'd make a good partner for Misha, to be honest. A horror. That's already your second question, so I don't think I have to answer. I try to conjure up a front made of pure crystallized cool and uninvolvement. I wonder whether I managed to fool even myself. At least Emmy is waggling her eyebrows dangerously a nasty smirk on her lips. Is that a yes? No, it's not a yes. Obviously unsatisfied at my refusal to answer her way to intimate question, she has enough sense to back off. Doesn't stop her from sticking out her tongue at me like a kid and giggling again. If that's your answer, I don't think I have to talk to you anymore. It's easy to see that she's not really angry. Besides, I have to go pack now. Mom will be worried if I miss my bus. See ya. Yeah, bye. She retreats back into her room, leaving me alone in the hallway. What's between me and Rin is not her business, right? That's why I ended up not saying anything about our fight to Emmy. Rin must not have said anything either. I guess even though they are friends, there are things they don't talk about. So if Rin is at the art gallery, I'd have to go all the way there. Now that I managed to get out of my room, I suppose it's not that much of a bother to go downtown. I could go get a ticket, but the train back home would have to wait, at least until tomorrow. No way I'm going to carry baggage to the train station in this rain, even if there's not that much of it. Rain makes all outlines seem very unstable, as if they were fading away. The townscape turns into a shapeless connection of various funny tones, fuzzy tones of grey instead of distinct forms of buildings and cars. Those poor souls who are forced into the downpour try to make as much hate as they possibly can, pitying each other for their shared misery. I turn the final corner, the 22nd corner so to say, and immediately feel stupid for being amused by my own pun. The door beckons me with promise, promises of warmth. The rainwater dripping from my umbrella makes an interesting, almost artistic patterns on the floor. I'm not wet, apart from my shoes that leave small puddles in my wake, completing the rainwater artwork. Nomi is here too, chatting with Say at the back of the gallery. Rin is nowhere to be seen though. Maybe she's upstairs. There are no customers though, which figures, considering the bucket loads of water dropping down the neck of anyone trying to brave the weather today. Welcome. Hello, sorry to interrupt. Ah, oh, good afternoon, Nakai. Came all the way here for a visit? Uh, no, I think it was just an impulse. I was around the neighborhood shopping and decided to stop by. My reflexive reaction is a white lie, which surprised myself. Maybe I just don't want to say that I came specifically to see Rin, even though that much must be obvious. 
My, my, you chose a bad day for shopping. Would you like some tea to warm you up? Thank you. Well, I'm fine, really. The weather could be better, though. Being on the first day of vacations is a bit depressing. Haha. <laughs> well, I'm sure it'll get better. Namiya offers a, his hearty laughter, bordering on, bordering on abrasive. Rain doesn't get you down, teacher? While I do prefer clear weather as well, I was actually leaving just now to meet someone. I prefer not getting my jacket soaked. It's very expensive. But of course I'm in a good mood. What did you think about the exhibition? It was wonderful, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very fancy. My unenthusiastic answer only spurs him to carry on, walking around the gallery while blabbering about the opening. He talks more and louder when he's moving. It's something I noticed at the club meetings, too. We got to talk with a good many people and make valuable contacts. One of Tezuka's paintings even got sold to a collector from Osaka. Follow his eyes to an empty space in the wall. I can't even remember which painting was hanging on that spot. Well, it's gone now. I was lucky. It was lucky that she was all right des despite that dizzy spell. She got a little quiet though, so I told her to rest well. Then again, she's been pretty shy. Shy? Whatever. Just not along with the teacher. The reception was very positive in general. I might be able to get one of my friends to write a little article on a magazine too. Shinichi, you're meeting your main king, Mr. Takashi, Takahashi Wait. Say's remark makes him stop in his tracks and check his wristwatch. Namiya frowns in displeasure at the interruption to his tirade. No, right. Yes, well, I'll be off then. We'll meet in September, Nakai. Bye. Wow, teacher really doesn't hold back when it comes to Rin's, Rin's budding artist career. It's weird how I say teacher. Because we don't... I mean, like, I would be more comfortable saying sensei. Teacher just sounds weird. I guess it takes a lot to succeed, but I suppose it, his job would be easier if Rin was more cooperative. Also, going back on the teacher thing, I call Matao, Matao. Not sensei. Apparently it's not worthy. I don't know. So, she's too indecisive even though she's doing just fine, like that dizzy spell from the night before. She just got freaked out or something, and I didn't do anything to help her. I sigh. It feels like the gap between me and Rin is only widening. She's going to become something great while I'm still feeling like I'm bogged down, despite promising myself to try and make something of my life. On top of that, we have that fight, and the longer we keep not talking, the harder the wounds become to heal. If that even is what we want. I never found out what Rin felt. And now I'm sure I want to... I'm not sure what I felt feel myself. Wish I could understand her, but Rin is not very open for interpretation. Not that she's hiding anything, she just seems to defy my attempts at making sense of what she's talking about on any given day. Something on your mind? Realize I've been spacing out in the middle of the gallery for who knows how long. Ah, uh, nothing special. I pretend to study the cl closest paintings to distract her. I've seen it before. All too familiar strokes of color twisting and melting into each other. Seemingly random still manage to feel like there's something happening behind the scenes, so to speak. Rin's style is so much like her. Abstract, incomprehensible, colorful, mysterious. I wonder if to understand an, an artist, one must understand art. Um, I may have a question. Oh. She looks up from the magazine she was idly leafing through, seemingly delighted at my display of unspecified interest. How do you interpret art? What do you mean? Her eyebrows rise high into questioning arcs, as if the question was too complicated to even begin to answer without clarification. Sorry if I'm asking something stupid. I don't think I really understand art like the pros do. Oh, there's no trick to it. Say so it my question away with a simple but aff efficient flick of the wrist. Everyone interprets art as they will, and, inter and interpretation is as much in the eye of the beholder as it is in as in the intentions of the creator. Pros have their own way, because there's this there's this thing called art theory. There are patterns in art just like in everything, and we assume that it's possible to draw some conclusions from observing those patterns. Her voice is like a teacher's, lecturing and adding emphasis on random words to keep the listeners on their toes. In 
the end, I suppose it's pretty meaningless. She moves to musing. She moves to musing seemingly to herself. Muttering loud enough for me to clearly hear. A good piece of art will make you feel something, and that's all there is to it. Feelings change, and they affect the art we create and the art we see. But. I'll tell you a story. Do you have to? The last one was depressing. It's important. Listen. About a hundred years ago, a little-known painter got news that his friend, a man called Kasu Kasugemas, had committed suicide. This happened while he was away and hadn't seen his friend for a while. So obviously, he must have felt even more conflicted than you normally would after hearing such a thing. For four years after that, our main character did nothing but monochromatic paintings because he was so deeply affected by the news. Whatever he did, he always kept returning to the same color that let him out of until it let him out of his grasp. She takes a little pause to check whether I'm still following. I am to an extent, so I give her the prompt that storyteller seemed to live for. So... So to continue from that, as I can't seem to come up with the question she wants me to come up with, my cat baked Socrates. She thought she had laid out all the tools for a revelation in front of me. Don't you see the point yet? Only her student proved to be too dense to get it. She looked discontented at my slowness. Picasso's blue period is one of the most lauded in the history of art, but who knows what he felt when he truly worked on those ma when he worked on those masterpieces. Sadness, longing, regret? Nobody can tell. If you, see, if you now see one of his blue period paintings, you probably interpret it differently from before you knew about Picasso, Picasso's friend, Kasugemas. Experiencing the art is always personal, personal, only interactive by chance or circumstances. There are ten million. There are a ten. There are a million. Where was I getting ten? Explanations for any given piece of art, but it might be that none of them are what the creator intended. That kind of reminds me of. There was this thing on Tumblr. Um, it was about liter literary analysis, and it showed Edgar Allan Poe, a cartoon of Edgar Allan Poe with a bunch of rainbows around. Uh, not rainbows, ravens around him, and it just posed like, I fucking love ravens, and then at the next panel is like this kid in class saying at once the teachers ask what, how they interpret the ravens in Poe's work the student says Poe liked ravens and the teacher's like no, that's incorrect, they represent like his longing and despair and all this other melancholy stuff and then there's just Edgar Allan Poe in the background just like with the best what the heck face because it's not what he meant at all or we can never know if that's what he meant at all anyway no man is an island you know an odd without understanding what the last remark meant no man is an island that is a true statement I don't understand it though. What she meant made sense. What she said made sense otherwise, except for one thing. If art is communication, like Wynne said, but everyone is talking their own secret language, like Say said, what can ever, anyone ever hope to communicate? It seems so futile and so pointless. Art really is not a thing for me. Say returns to her art magazine, and I make a round in the gallery, trying to see what Wynne can see in her own paintings. A soothing mood takes hold of the gallery, surrounded by the rainstorm. The big windows making the transparent isolation feel more comfortable. A tinkle of the bell disrupts the tranquil mood. Ren pushes the door open with her shoulder and steps in. I had almost forgotten that she was the reason why I came to the gallery in the first place. I think I'm ready. She pauses mid-sentence, noticing my presence. The needle dropping silence lasts for exactly one and a half seconds. Not enough for either me or Say to open our mouths, but enough for Rin to react. I'm going for a walk. Getting back outside with the reckless pace uncharacteristic of herself, Rin seems to forget that it's still raining. Without giving it any real salt, real thought, I grab my umbrella and hurry after her. I catch Rin around the corner, open the umbrella, and lift it above the two of us while still having, up, having to almost run to keep up with her. She doesn't protest me running after her, nor giving me her shelter against the rain. 
eventually slowing her pace down so I can match it without an immediate danger of overexerting myself. I relax from the rush, assessing the situation. The last time I held my umbrella to guard us both against the rain, I didn't think too much about it. But now all the things that happened since then are gathering into a freezing cold ball around my stomach. Being close to her makes me uncomfortable, and I feel flustering. I feel myself flustering slightly. It's hard to get words out of my mouth. It's a feel suddenly very, very dry. Still, it's not like I can back off. Why do you keep running away? I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. It hurts every time I do. Sometimes it can't be helped. I don't want to hurt. Fine. We don't have to talk. What should we do? Let's just keep walking. Just walking? Just walking. Okay. Our footsteps go splish splash in the shallow puddles forming on the streets as we walk through the rainfall. Rin, now walking beside me in her unhurried and relaxed manner, doesn't seem to be a bit bothered by the fact that she's getting wet, even though she needn't to. She's partially out of the protective shelter of my umbrella, despite it being more than big enough for the two of us. It's as if she doesn't even notice the rain drenching her shirt. Rin's demeanor always evokes mental images of a meditative calm, even when she might be in an in inner turmoil. But I don't think that is meditation. That's just getting soaked in the rain. I wish I could become more calm too. I've become too involved with Rin to retain my usual aloofness. It feels like I've become one of those people who fool themselves into thinking they are objective, only to find out that they are the worst kind of liars. Illusions to fool ourselves. What better way to make one feel like a good person? It might be better to lose that illusion. I'll be going back home for some time, so I thought I'd come see you before that. I could have thought of a better conversation up in there, but Rin actively refuses to talk, makes it hard. That's good. I might have thought you'd, be, you'd have been kidnapped otherwise. You can't keep running away from everything. Not even from me trying to talk seriously. I'm always serious. Also, I seem to be running very slowly right now. Maybe I should take lessons from Emmy. It's futile, like talking to a brick wall that randomly spouts sarcastic nonsense back at you. Think of your exhibit, of exhibition opening. What if you had ran away? Rin doesn't answer to that. She just keeps walking. Or running slowly, escaping me into her silence. She has a knack for being alone in company, I've noticed. We head down the street, then turn left, then three times right, then left again. It's like that night from some time ago. We kept choosing directions randomly because it doesn't matter where we're going. All that matters is walking the sound of raindrops drumming against the umbrella. Water flows from the rooftops of the buildings and into the storm drains and wide rivers. Even though I try to step over them, my fear of getting wet through my shoes. I keep walking in silence, and that just begs that just begs to be broken again. I'm sure I'm the only one feeling like this though. Why did you have the exhibition? Rin just shrugs sullenly and looks in the other direction. I give up at this point. It's pointless. What did she want to accomplish? What she said at the night of the opening made me feel that there was something special. Something special she wanted. It felt to me that Rin had hoped for something unattainable. She set the bar high, and inside her own head she failed, no matter how many people liked her works. It's understandable to like realism. Most people do, even not, if not quite on the extreme level Rin takes it to. But it's not a reason to live in your private world that accepts no visitors. You can't bend the world to fit your twisted megalomaniac cosmology, where everything works just like you want. That's what frustrates me the most in Rin. She wants the world to live by her rules, disregarding everything that conflicts with those as irre irrelevant or unnecessary. I can't understand I can't believe how anyone in Yamaku could not have been could not have the bare minimum perception to understand the world that sometimes can be very unfair. I'm sure she's not the only one who wishes some things were different, but we can't at least grasp the f grasp the facts as they are. I take a sideways glance at Rin who's looking up at her dome shaped cover. 
There's a poor replacement for a, a real sky and monochrome bleakness. The rain just keeps falling. Just like the class today, Rin doesn't really feel give the feeling of wanting to be watched. She sulks and is in with the sky that loves that she loves so. I shouldn't have come. Her presence only reminds me of how angry I got because of the exact same reasons. And how those reasons probably can't ever change. Even though I want to say I'm sorry. Even though I don't want us to break apart. I can't bring myself to say either of these things. We keep measuring our, the rain drenched streets one step at a time. Often, when you walk with someone else, your steps become synchronized as if through some weird subconscious pact. I notice that ours never do. Time passes and the strikes against the drum skin of my umbrella fade as the clouds above slowly disperse to reveal a cerulean blue. Eventually the rain yields enough for me to close the umbrella, shaking the excess water off before I do. While I wrestle with the mechanism, rain stops so abruptly that I take five steps before realizing that she's not with me anymore. Stupid umbrella seems to be jammed. When I turn around, I find her staring at me with an impassive face. I wanted someone to say, I understand how you feel. Wouldn't that be great? Is that an answer to the question from before? I'm not sure. Yeah, but why is it so important? Because otherwise, I don't know if I can bear this. I was still in the middle of fooling my umbrella, so I just answered something to get the conversation going. But what she says now freezes my blood. If someone says a joke and laughs, you laugh with them, right? Because joy doubled is a joy tripled, right? If someone is hurt and sad, you hug, you comfort and hug them, right? Because that way, she pauses, her mouth still halfway open, then remembers to close it. A gloom sets on her face and simultaneously on my heart. I don't know why the right words never come out. I don't know why I can laugh only when I make myself. I don't know why everything stays only inside me, even when it feels like I'm going to burst. Her flat, expressionless face does not even waver when she says that. Her usual steady voice becomes only slightly quieter than normal. But who, who would ever want to feel like that? Rin looks at me and I imagine the sadness reflecting from her eyes, whether it really is there or not. I don't. I don't want to feel like that. We stay silent for a little while after that. Rin, because she said all she has to say once, at once. I, because I have no clue how to process what she just said. I don't understand what Rin is saying. Or well, I do, but I don't want to. For the first time both things of these things happen, it has to be sim simultaneously. That irony is not lost on me. I think everyone wants to be understood as universal, but that is impossible, not only for me, but for anyone. Say said so too. You affect other people and are affected by them, but in the end, you see everything the way only you do. All people are alone. We just use each other to alleviate that loneliness. I wonder why I put it like that. I just felt that what Say told me rang true. As if I had always thought that, like, uh, as if I had always thought like that without knowing it. It feels like she articulated my thoughts in clear, simple words, and that stupid so story about Picasso. Rin droops her head like a withering flower, letting her bangs fall in front of her eyes so that I can't see them. Why do you say that when you make me feel otherwise? It's unfair. The shaky voice that says those words do not belong to Rin. I really thought you could be different, that I wouldn't have to be alone. It's a bitter voice of disappointment, spoken through clenched teeth and a quivering chest. I'm sorry. If you are, why do you say something unfair like that? Her demanding tone invokes no particular feeling in me, apart from sadness that has been there since yesterday evening. She doesn't intimidate me at all, not anymore. Rin is not a prodigal art genius, nor an unpredictable idiot savant who could tear the logical logic lobe of my brain into shreds whenever she opened her mouth. She's just a girl that I thought I loved, a loved one who wanted to be my friend, a friend whom I let down. 
I say that because saying otherwise would feel like lying. Why? Simple questions are the hardest ones. I have to close my eyes so that I can focus on my thoughts enough to answer her. I'm no artist. I can never be on the same level with you. There is a world only you can see, and to be a part of it, I would have to become me. I would have to become you. That's something I can't do, no matter how much you wish me to. Ren takes in my explanation without batting an eyelash. I'm not a real artist either. I just paint because it makes me feel like I can, I can really feel something. She holds her breath for a while before releasing it in a long sigh-like flow. That's why I do it. I've decided. I'll do it. Even if his sound says that, that's what I will do. Do what? Rin starts starting a little shows. Rin starting a little shows that uh, she had regressed into talking to herself again. But I'm glad I can snap her back even now. Teacher and Say have, been, have talked to someone who is very important. Who is a very important person. I got a scholarship for a big art school in Tokyo. He said I could transfer there and start after the summer is over if I wanted to. I don't really get why. Hold on, what? Why didn't you tell? I just did. You are the first one I told because I just said I just decided it just now. She keeps her cool, looking only mildly surprised at my shocked interjection. It's ridiculous how easily she can say something so life-changing. I can't believe it. After what happened in February. I I'd have enough chance for this year. Had enough change for this year. Even if things are going badly right now, I don't want everything to change. But what about Yamaku? Don't you want to graduate with any everyone? My plea evokes no emotion. Everyone who? Emmy, me, everyone? I feel my pul pulse rising unnervingly and my breath becomes fast and shallow. I don't want this to happen. The real life is not mine. You just said that everyone is alone. I didn't mean it like that. You just said that you'd have to seize the day and start living your life. I have my life. I have to live my life too. Rin is twisting my words to justify running away again. It makes me angry. Her ease, finality, and seriousness in announcing this is unacceptable. As if changing your life is something you can do on a moment's whim. No. How can you say that? Why don't you ever try? Why don't you even try to belong? A desperate accusation has no effect. It feels like I'm once again out of the weapons. That I can't reach through her no matter what I try. Rin is so frustratingly absolute in our own judgment that it might make me hate her if I didn't love her. Even though I don't know which way I'm feeling anymore. Maybe I am that kind of person. The kind that only belongs to herself. I won't accept that. Her nonchalant eyes do not seem to care whether I accept her decision or not. The pause lets me cool down to find my sensibilities. While I do, the parting rain clouds reveal a setting sun that still has time to shine in its last few warming rays before calling it a day. A mosaic of light and shadow spreads on, on the walls of buildings, on the street, and the fence circling a park on the other side of the street. Rain shadows long enough to reach my feet. It's like one of those western movies with two cowboys staring each other down, ready to sling their guns at each other. The one who loses, loses, her, loses his nerve will eat lead. I realize I would have the disadvantage of because the sun is behind Rin, stinging my eyes. Do you hate me? She draws first and I have no counter. I don't know. Did I lose? Even if I did, what would it matter? I scramble for words, words I could salvage this. I find none. You are my friend, and I promise you that. I'm not the kind of guy who forgets about promises. I think that is the most important thing. We could try to. Don't say it. Predicting what I was going to say, Rin throws herself into my arms, pressing her body against mine. I feel her rising to her tiptoes match my height and snuggle closer. The scent of her hair is that of the rain and paint thinner. Her body feels as cold as always. Her breathing against my neck is as hot as always. It's funny how all these feels so familiar even the Rin as a whole does not. Are you sure you can't take me? Rin whispers into my ear so close that I can feel the movement of her lips against my earlobe. It's teasing, taunting. If this were some other kind of situation, I'm sure this tickled tantalizing I'm sure it would tickle 
I'm sure it would tickle tantalizingly, and I will giggle even though I'm a guy. It would be easier if you did. Dunno, it's pretty hard when you're hugging me like that. I wonder because it's, if it's because of my sullen voice, but she takes a step back, looking wistfully at, at her short arms. I wish she hadn't done that. I can't hug anyone, Hisao. I'm a bad person like that. That's why I have to go. She disarms me completely with three simple sentences, rendering me unable to argue anymore. And since I can't, Rin is free to continue as she wills, shifting her weight from one foot to the other before she does. I will learn to hug people in my own way. I'm sure I can become a real artist, but if I do, I might not be able to be me anymore. A hint of a smile on her lips is a betrayal, a full sign of self-confidence in a future Rin can't even foresee. I'd want to interpret that as a sign of hope, but I know better. Rin just keeps smiling that awkward forced smile of hers. That's why, please forget about me, and I will forget about you too. I'm sure that... She chokes in the middle of saying something I would never come to hear. I don't think I wanted to hear it anyway. This is not fair. Rin is not joking. Rin is always serious, but I can't accept it. I can't. Forget about, forget about you. How could I ever? That's what I'd like to say. But I don't know how I would continue. I can't come up with anything good to say, so I have to challenge her. How can you say such a thing? Sorry, that was an email. Disrupting the mood. Rin raises her eyes to meet mine. They are serious and deep. A perfect image of the uncharted territory that I always thought they were. Even now, I can't read her emotions from those unblinking jade irises that could never reflect what they saw. It's easy. After all, I'm good at forgetting things. Her unfairness is choking my throat, but I manage to utter the question burning in my mind. So, is this it? Is this goodbye? Rin kept looking at me gently, without answering my question. From her eyes, I could see that she didn't even need to say anything. There were no more words for us. She turned around and walked off without looking back. All around me, the world kept changing, little by little, but I was left standing there. The sun dropped below the horizon, casting long and thin shadows across the street. And the waning light Rin's distance, din distancing back to the back seemed to be like a faraway dream. The gap between us grew slowly. The ripples on the puddle she stepped on expanded until they met the limits of her ti their tiny existence and disappeared without a trace. Her words stayed frozen deep inside my heart. Okay, so that was so much worse than the bad ending. That's so sad. And that line, oh, jeez, the we're all alone line, just try to, what was it, we're all alone, we just try to find company to alleviate our permanent loneliness, or however that was. <sighs> so, that was long. A lot longer than I expected. Almost an hour. So guys, thanks for watching. Tomorrow will be Shizune's bad ending. No idea how long that's going to take. But, yeah. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.